Survival of the salmon is critical to the survival of the South Puget Sound Indian tribes. But in 1962, here on the Nisqually, uh, both the state game and fisheries department uh, began their heavy-handed uh, mobilization of forces and uh, arrest of all uh, fishermen on the river. So in January 1962, when you had uh, the steelhead running here and you had the chum salmon running, you had both departments down here arresting the fishermen. They were just going out and fishing. They weren't um, clearing out a um, an environmentally sensitive area to build a house. They weren't digging big holes for a deeper pool. You know, they weren't asking for a bigger home. They were just trying to eat. They were very poor people in the sense of the way we look at wealth and, and poverty even today and back then, but they just wanted to feed their children. But what's more astonishing is that they knew that they had a right to do that. And the Indian has always waited for the fish to get home. He wouldn't go out looking for them and trapping them and hunting them and netting them out there. He waited till they got home. Well, the non-Indian, he had the big boats and he owned the bank and everything, so he went out chasing the fish and he caught them before they come home. And when the salmon got home to the mouth of the Squally River, the state of Washington would close it down for conservation. And then the Indian tribes would all be closed down. The Indians couldn't fish anymore. So that's where the confrontation started. You know, there was no win as far as us exercising our right anymore or getting even enough fish for our food, uh, for our ceremonies or any, anything like that. So we went into a, to a battle with the state of Washington over that. Sometimes I, um, at night, I'd wake up at two o'clock in the morning and uh, there would be huge spotlights going up and down the river and they'd be looking for my dad. Um, sometimes I'd wake up at two, three o'clock in the morning and there'd be 200, 300 game wards all over the landing and running this way and that way looking for my dad, for my uncle. Um, sometimes I'd come home and, and there'd be game wardens and Indians fighting and my mom and dad was usually right in the middle of it. Many of the Indian fishermen and women from Frank's Landing ended up being arrested 40 to 50 times for exercising their treaty rights. Finally, it ended up in federal court with the United States government representing the Indians bringing a lawsuit against the state of Washington. The Indians won a decisive victory in what has been called the Bolt Decision, named after the federal court judge who heard the case, Judge George Bolt. In addition to the right to catch up to 50% of the harvest, they were given a significant role in managing the resource. <laughs>